Last year, 2020, you know, a very different year than we've experienced. You know, how, how did you think your leadership got you through um, 2020? You know, as we look back now after being a quarter of the way through 2021. Mm. How my leadership got me through it, I think I've always been an adaptive, adaptive type of leader and mm. respond to the needs of the time, putting the children's learning first, making sure that I've got the teachers on board, not jumping in um, without having their support because they need to know where they're going and they need to know that they're capable of doing what needs to happen. And so last year, we hit the ground running. I mean, we already had teachers on board in terms of online learning, but then there was a gap there with our infants classes. And I just thought it was amazing because I've always been a leader that promotes leadership from across the board. It's not mm. just the exec team. Mm. Uh, I can remember in my early year appointing a girl onto the executive that had only been teaching for three years. So I was looking for leadership from across the school and it happened like that. People mm. just got together, they collaborated. It was just unbelievable. People offered their support before school, after school, during school, making sure that everybody could access um, the, the type of um, technology that they needed to. And so we introduced for our infants classes, seesaw, videos of lessons, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, think, I think my, my leadership changed in terms that it um, it had to respond to the situation as it was now. You couldn't just sit there and do nothing. So you had to make sure that you resourced the teachers, that you supported the teachers, that you gave them the time, that you gave them the, the feedback, that, um, uh, you know, you communicated with them on a regular basis, that you were present, that you were... Um, reassuring in terms of what they were producing for the children in terms of their learning was um, being accepted by the parents that that was the way to go and it was giving mm -hmm. the teachers the feedback from the parents giving feedback from myself checking in in terms of well-being I think that's always part of a principal's role at St Michael's we always have our well-being week in week seven nothing changed you know, um, a nice morning tea. I heard someone say previously individually boxed, but we do that every week seven, free coffee for the staff and a morning tea. It's wellbeing week and a uh, lucky door seven. prize, a lucky door prize, a raffle, I'll be there. You know, I'll, free I'll raffle. Be there in week I'll be there in week seven, Danuta. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 that's good. Can I, that's, that's really interesting. Uh, and I've known you a long time as a great school leader. Um, you know, you do a lot of those things anyway. So what, what was the sort of COVID sort of uh, approach? Was it any different or, um, um, or did you have something just stuck up your sleeve that you're able to? No, probably doing better what I did before. I think right. that, you right. know, the fact that we were cut off from our community, from our parents, I think that the most important thing was to make sure that we were communicating with our parents on a regular basis, reassuring them that their children weren't missing out just because they were learning online and at home. And I think that was the thing, you know, making sure that I was speaking to the teachers on a regular basis, finding out what was happening, what was the feedback that they were getting from, from the parents, what could they learn from the children as well? Which were the students who were responding to the online learning? Which were the ones that weren't responding to the online learning? Making sure that the teachers communicated with the parents to find out why and what we could do to get them on board. I think that was, it was more a hands-on in a different way. You know, where a principal normally would be doing um, a, a learning walk, it was more a learning walk with a lot of communicating direct communicating with the teachers, asking, how are we going to do this? How are we going to fix this? And we also had huge numbers of children at school. So it was blended learning. We had between 90 children to over 100 children on a daily basis during COVID. So the school had to make sure that the children who were sitting in front of the teachers were also um, having their time with the classroom teacher and they loved it. The response from the children, whenever I spoke to them, 
Mrs. Maker, this was the best time. I said, why? Because we've got our teacher to ourselves. And they did. They loved it, that one-on-one -on -one learning with their, with their teacher. And, and also it was an eye-opener for our parents. I think they were appreciative. They could see how hard our teachers work in reality when they had to do one-on-one -on -one learning at home or with a family of three or four. I think they took a step backwards and they could see that, you know, there's value in what our teachers do. They do a great job. That gives me a sort of a good lead into the last, the, the last question. The second question is, if, if you look back over last year or gained ground, um, what do you think you learned about leading? through the experience? I know you've touched on certain things. But uh, I've touched on it already and I say it all the time. Bottom line is good relationships, strong relationships, good communication with the parents. And you know what? We've improved our communication with our parents. We're sending out... Um, messages short sharp here's learning happening in year four this is what's happening in kindergarten isn't this exciting just to make sure that the parents can see what's happening because like I said before we're still slightly cut off in terms of how we used to work where we had a lot more parents engaged in working with children in the classroom so mm -hmm. we're trying to make sure that they're, they're up to date with what their children are learning I think that communication is really important and I also think encouraging teachers, and I've said this for 30 years, you know, you can do whatever you want to do. Greg said that you can do whatever you, can, you want to do in terms of your teaching. You've got the syllabus, but there's so much flexibility. If you want to go forward in a different way, you can. And so I think I've learned that we can do things differently and that we have so many great leaders in our school. It, you say it to your year six students every year. It's not just the, the student leaders. All of year six are leaders. All of our staff can be leaders. And I think it's important to build capacity of your staff. It's, um, that's, that's great. I couldn't ask for a better, better response. There's a recurring theme as you'd expect in a, in a range of things, but one of them is this this constant, you know, short, sharp, getting in touch with the parents. There seems to be a real understanding about, you know, you don't have to wait for the standard old ways of doing, just get in there and get the information out. So um, a, a good learning for everyone. Well, Danuta, thanks very much.